I started Wizard 101 six months ago, and as someone who never really played it growing up, I thought it was just some dumb kids game. But then I got into Ravenwood Academy, and I learned about the power of magic, of course, it is a wizard game, but I also learned about the power of self-control, especially when it comes to opening booster packs, because that's, that's a dangerous game you're playing there. And after a six month journey across the spiral, I realized that I really don't know that much about this stupid game, so here's my review of Wizard 101 as someone who started the game 15 years after release. So starting off with the gameplay, the first thing you do is pick a school, and this is important because this is what you're gonna dedicate basically your whole personality to. A school in Wizard 101 is kind of like a horoscope, because whatever you end up picking will determine so much what people say about you. Like for example, if you end up making a fire wizard, people will think that you're amazing, that you're just excellent at everything you do, and everyone's gonna love you basically. Now if you end up picking a life wizard, well, you're kind of like an angel, right? People should be opening doors for you, they should be nice to you, but if you end up picking death school, then that kind of just means you never grew out of your hot topic emo phase. So every element has different spells and different play styles, and of course I just had to be a fire wizard. And the game starts off in Unicorn Way, and right off the bat, the concept is kind of easy to understand, right? You have a deck of spells, and there's enemies that need to get hurt. And oh boy, you're gonna hurt them. <laughs> but at this point, I didn't really know what the strategy was, because you have a deck with random attack spells, and you obviously just want to hit hard, so all you do is just spam damage spells non-stop. And this type of gameplay is gonna get you pretty far in the beginning, but at a certain point, you're gonna realize that these bad guys that you're fighting, they're not getting one shot anymore and they're starting to hit back and your health is starting to get a little low and this is the point where you're starting to feel a little uneasy with your combat strategy so maybe it's time to learn about those blade spells that boost your attack damage or if you happen to be not a complete loner in the game wizard 101 is very player friendly it's very community friendly it's very multiplayer friendly so you can just uh, get your friends to start playing with you or just make friends along the way and i have to say that that's actually one of the best things i like about the game just how the game really emphasizes and motivates people to interact with each other and and make friends so it's not unusual for you to be questing and find some random person who's willing to help you out and quest alongside with you. So the game starts off with pretty basic spells and pretty basic strategies when it comes to dealing with fights, but as you level up and as the story progresses, then you start learning some really cool spells, like Meteor Strike for Fire Wizards for example, where you go instead of hitting one enemy at a time, now you're hitting multiple enemies. And once you start getting access to enchantment spells from Astral Schools, those make your spells passively hit for stronger. And the gameplay starts shifting from just casting non-stop attack spells to now enchanting your spells and using the blade spells to buff your attack the trap spells to weaken your enemies, and there's also things like feints and prisms, and there's a lot of variety of situational spells that you're not always going to use, but it's always handy to have because you might run into a fight that you just need to have those spells alongside with you to help you beat the enemy. Though I will say that sometimes the game kind of feels like you're spending three to four turns just setting up your blades and your traps and all your everything else you need to set up to then be able to one-shot your opponent, so that aspect of the gameplay can get kind of stale, that can get pretty repetitive. But just when you think that the game is starting to feel repetitive, from doing the same thing over and over again. Well, there's other new worlds that you happen to unlock while you're questing, so you're facing new challenges, new enemies, and you just start learning new spells altogether, right? So you go from casting Meteor Strike, which is one of my favorite spells, to then start casting Fire Dragon, which is even cooler to start attacking with, because you're summoning a whole ass Fire Dragon, you know? And down the quest line, you eventually start running into certain bosses that have cheat mechanics built into them. And these sort of force you to play the game differently just to keep it fresh, like certain bosses might not allow you to use Blaze at all, or some bosses might be even even forcing you to attack them every single turn just to avoid some big damage attack they might do. So for a turn-based spellcasting combat system, Wizard 101 somehow manages to make this basic formula and keep it entertaining and engaging through like progressive unlocks. But before we can even start talking about progressive unlocks in the game, there's one important unlock that you have to do in order to be able to enjoy Wizard 101 in the first place. And that's the heavily discussed paywall, because just like any other MMORPG, Wizard 101 has what's basically a free trial that gives you access to half of Wizard City, the first world, up until Cyclone lane where you're hit with the buy membership or pay for this area if you want to keep exploring. So at this point in the game you have two options if you want to keep exploring the rest of Wizard 101. You can either buy a membership subscription which is only $10 a month and this gives you access to all the worlds, all the areas, everything's unlocked as long as you keep paying the membership, or you can do a one-time payment and buy areas separately permanently. And I'm personally not a fan of buying areas individually permanently because if you want to unlock all the worlds that can get pretty hefty, pretty expensive, pretty fast, and sometimes you just don't want to drop all that money at once so you know a ten dollar membership there's so much you can do in a single month with only ten dollars right i think in my first month i got from level one i think all the way to like almost level 50 just in that one single month of membership and the paywall itself is something that i learned that the players have been talking about non-stop for years like they're always having a discussion on how much free content you should be allowed to have before hitting the paywall and it's just like politics everyone has a different opinion and i feel like sometimes or like at least most of the time nobody knows what they're talking about and look in my humble opinion 
don't, I'm not a data analyst, okay? I don't have the secret King's Isle documents explaining what point exactly is the best one to put the paywall in, but I do know that they've been testing this thing over years and I only know about the current one. I didn't know about the previous one or the ones that they may implement in the future. And I personally think that the paywall argument itself is a really stupid one to begin with because the people that are arguing over the paywall are people that are not affected by the paywall by any means, right? Because these are players that have been playing the games for years and they're already like high level or max level to the point where the paywall itself doesn't really affect them because they're already way ahead in the story. So why are you arguing over something that doesn't really affect you in any way? But if you want my opinion, which is an opinion that doesn't matter because I'm just some random person off the internet just like you, I don't think that the paywall itself right now allows me to fall in love with my character enough. Like, it doesn't really get me hooked long enough for me to go like, oh, wow, I'm really invested in my character. I've been playing for a while. I want to keep playing and I want to keep paying the membership. Now let's talk about the story and the questing overall in Wizard 101, because Wizard 101 has a lot of story. And the problem with having so much content is that you can only mix and match the quests and the storyline so many ways before it starts to feel a little repetitive. It kind of feels like you're always doing the same exact thing. You're always killing X amount of monsters, collecting X amount of things, or just going from one person to the other. Like those quests, let me tell you, those are the ones I hate the most, where the entire premise of the quest is just like, hey, go talk to this person that's literally standing two feet away from me. That's the whole quest, thank you. I just hate those ones honestly. But the issue that I have with questing in the storyline in Wizard 101 is the same thing that happens with every other MMORPG. As time progresses, they keep adding content and adding content and adding content, and you're just overwhelmed with so much content that you have to play through that at a certain point, you kind of just stop caring about the storyline. Like when I started playing Wizard 101, I was paying attention to every single piece of lore in the quest, and they do a really good job with the voice acting of the characters. But after just being dumped with so much information, I kind of just stopped caring and started skipping the dialogue. But like a lot of the times the quest that I'm doing feel like I'm watching a filler episode in an anime, and that's not counting the side quests, because those are a different, complete filler upon filler of animes. But what really matters to me is that there's an overarching story that that's what's interesting per se. Like I would say that all the quest chains itself in every individual quest, kind of boring. But the overarching story, sometimes you'll get snippets of like, whoa, what's going on here? And you're just like, whoa, you know, this is actually very important to the plot. I should probably read this one. So just because sometimes the individual quests feel kind of bland and you know, just they just feel like a drag doesn't mean that the overarching story of the world isn't interesting because there's so many worlds in Wizard 101 and they all have some pretty interesting stories to them. So yeah, those are the ones that really get you hooked. And sometimes you feel like you want to play Wizard 101, but you don't really want to go questing. You don't want to go through all the fighting and all the progression and all that stuff. You kind of just want to lay back and take it easy. And well, surprisingly, Wizard 101 has a bunch of things you can do that are just outside of the whole quest progression system. Like for example, Wizard 101 has housing and housing is really cool because you start off in a dormitory in your school, but eventually you manage to buy your own house. And there you can start decorating with furniture that you collect in your quest and you can make the house look really pretty. And it actually has an actual use case as well. Like there's crafting tables and enchantment tables that you can actually craft things in. And there's also a bunch of mini games in Wizard 101, outside and inside your house too. Like there's a bunch of like furniture that are specifically made to be mini games that you can play with your friends in your houses, which is, you know, kind of cool. And one of the main things that you do in your house is you start farming so you can level up your, your farming skill. Certain things that you plant will give you certain rewards. But what I learned is that people mostly just use farming just to get couch potatoes and evil magma peas, because these are the two plants that give you mega snacks as rewards and what mega snacks are are things that you give to your pets because Wizard 101 also has pets. And basically the whole pet system in the game is more than just like decoration, right? There's a very complex system that you're gonna spend a lot of time trying to figure out. Like I avoided pets for the longest time because it just felt like a giant headache and I actually had to sit down with someone who actually knew about the game and basically take a pet class just to be able to learn how everything works. So Wizard 101 has pets that you can raise and level up and they actually help you in combat by either giving you more stats or having spells that they may cast or having spells that they just give you outright. And your pet starts off at a baby level and you have to keep playing mini games with them to then be able to feed them snacks to level them up. And well, this is where you're gonna spend so much time. You're gonna waste so much money and spend so much time training these pets because just to get the perfect pet that has the appearance you want, that has the abilities that you want, takes so much money, so much time and so many snacks just to be able to get that. And I managed to get a good pet, I really did. But that took so much money. <laughs> like not real money, just in-game money 
so much money, so much time, so many snacks. It, it's difficult, man. Opening booster packs in Wizard 101, let me just tell you outright, that's a dangerous behavior, man. It's just like opening Yu-Gi-Oh booster packs or Magic the Gathering, or it's just like summoning heroes in Genshin Impact. You're opening booster packs and you're trying to get the mounts and you're trying to get the, the armor that you want or the spells that you want. It's a dangerous thing, man. I'm, that's, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna elaborate on the whole booster packs or how many booster packs there are or what sort of rewards or mounts you can get off booster packs. Let me just say that it's a dangerous habit, man. Be careful with opening booster packs because they are way too exciting. And now to talk about one of the most interesting things that Wizard 101 has, which is a weird sense of togetherness in the community. No other MMORPG that I've played has this sense of togetherness, this sense of friendship inside the community like Wizard 101 has. Like to put it into perspective, when you're playing World of Warcraft, you kind of feel forced to like have to play with dungeons with people. Like you, have, you feel forced like, okay, I have to deal with a tank. I have to deal with the heal. And another example is RuneScape because RuneScape feels like a single player MMORPG. Even though the game promotes multiplayer interactions, it really just feels like you're alone all the time. But I don't know what sort of magic sauce they put in the recipe in Wizard 101, but the people are so welcoming and generous and they're, they're just more than happy to just take time out of their day to, to start questing with you. People are just there. Like, I don't know if it's me specifically because I stream the game and people want to interact with me in chat, but even people who are not streamers, I've talked with them and they're like, yeah, one of the best things I like about the game is that the game is, you know, it has a good community. But unfortunately, it is the internet and it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Like, for example, they say that PvP in Wizard 101 is the one of the most toxic things in the game. And I've been playing the game for six months and I have not stepped foot in a PvP arena for that very same reason. I'm not going anywhere near that cesspool. But from what I've been experiencing so far, I've actually really enjoyed doing everything except PvP. And of course, there's always elitists in the game that think they know how to play the game better than you. And it's like they want to make sure that you know that they're better than you because, you know, that's like one of the few things that they got going on for them. But I do remember that I was streaming one time and this person came up and was like, wow, that myth wizard that you're playing with, they don't know what they're doing. I can't believe that they're playing it like that. They're playing it so wrong. And it's just like, do you get brownie points for telling people that you're better? That, th does that matter at the end of the day? It really doesn't, man. So yeah, there's always going to be people that are like that. But at least in Wizard 101, from what I've seen for how the community interacts, it's a small minority. You know, it's nothing to be worried about, to be honest. But overall, my six month experience with Wizard 101, as someone who started playing the game, you know, 15 years afterwards, who never really got the chance to play it on release, I really think that this is a good game that's totally worth playing in 2023, 2024 and beyond. And if you haven't checked it out, and if you've always been like, oh, did I miss the train on Wizard 101? Probably not, honestly. I think all the experiences and all the people that I've met in Wizard 101 has honestly been a net positive for me. I've not been playing the game every single day. I've heard people that just max their accounts in two to three weeks and I'm just like, how the hell do you do that, dude? For me, it's been six months of playing it on stream and I've just recently reached like level 102, okay? So I still got a lot more levels to do. I still have a lot more content to discover, a lot more stories to unfold and all that stuff. So yeah, at the end of the day, should you play Wizard 101? Um, my answer is yes, or at least give it a shot. Like at the very least, if you want to play Play it and make it past the free trial. It's only $10. If you like it, cool, keep playing. And if you don't like it, it was only $10, you know? So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.